Five months ago, Sarah and I were in the basement of my home working on a puzzle. The TEDx Makatawa proposal was due at 11.59 p.m. It was 11.30. <laughs> we had 29 minutes to decide if we were going to submit anything at all. And as we began to think more about submitting something, we began to feel less and less qualified. After all, what have I done? I haven't started a business, I haven't written a book, and I certainly don't have a PhD in anything. The reality is, is that I'm a student, and that's been my story for the past 16 years. While this may be the case for both of us, our position is unique. We're graduating from high school this year, and we have a chance to reflect on why after such an extensive education, we're left with an underwhelming sense of accomplishment. Now, reflecting on our time thus far, we've realized a very sad trend among our fellow seniors. We've realized that over time, our, kind of, our passion has begun to dwindle. So that flame that was initially there, that spark in the student's eye when they began to learn about what a new topic was, it's begun to go out. And we've been thinking about, you know, there's obviously a lot of things that could contribute to that, but we think that one of the biggest things that contributes to that is that our high schools, within the classroom, we're beginning to lack direct purpose to life outside of the classroom. But it has not always been this way. One of the best examples of purposeful learning can be seen within a kindergarten classroom. In kindergarten, students, they go to school and they learn about this crazy notion of red and blue. And then they go home and they see red and blue all over the place. At that point in time, their education has direct purpose to life. In high school, this connection can become less visible. On occasions, we've asked some of our teachers where the information we're learning would actually be applicable outside of a classroom, whether they like that or not. It goes something like this. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Where would I use Newton's theorem of calculus outside of this classroom? Yeah, literally nowhere. <laughs> this, <laughs> this makes us feel great about our education, of course. Um, and we just start to realize that what we're learning doesn't necessarily connect to what we're going to be doing in the future. It's easy to blame your teachers for this, but really it's not their fault. It's the disconnect between what the educational system has been told that students need to learn and what we're actually going to be using once we leave high school. We've had trouble finding our own purpose through all of this. Now, the theme of this conference is what's next. And for many of our local high school students, what's next entails college. Um, so for me, I'm still in the midst of a long college application process. Um, but through that, right from the get-go as a freshman when I was visiting different colleges, I began to do what a lot of people have done for business. So like when you're applying for a job, you want to tailor your resume so that it looks best to the employer. Now you never want to lie, that'll end you somewhere bad. But what you do is you bring out the qualities that your employer wants to see. Now the same thing happens for people that are applying to college. Um, and so that's basically what I started doing right from the beginning of freshman year. When I, was looking at uh, when I was looking at courses that I could take, I was looking at ones that I was really, really interested in, but then I realized, oh, those don't look impressive to these colleges. So I passed those on, and I would go with the ones that looked more impressive. So for me, in the process of trying to lock in my spot at a top-tiered institution, I completely gave up on the notion that education, and it sounds so silly, but I completely gave up on the notion that education could actually be for what I was interested in. The whole application process changed what education should be, which is a journey, and it changed it into a race. This is really what both of us did throughout high school. <coughs> Excuse me. As we were choosing what courses we were going to take, we looked to advanced placement courses. This is what we were told colleges wanted to see in high school students. AP courses are more difficult, there's a lot more coursework, and in theory they prove that you're ready for the rigor of college. Now, we have taken a lot of these classes. Has that been intellectually valuable to us? Sure. But has that set us apart from every other high school student? Not really. In 1956, when only around 2,000 AP exams were being administered every year, it was in your best interest as a high school student to take these courses. But times have changed, and in 2015, over 4 million AP exams were administered. What once fueled competitivity has now made us appear mundane, and it's only going to get worse. We mapped this out, and by 2030, if this trend continues, over 10 million AP courses will be taken. That is crazy. It totally destroys the notion of individuality within the school system. And this story isn't only ours. This is a norm for many of our classmates. The high school education system hasn't caught up with the needs and expectations of students today. But don't worry, there's good news. <laughs> the solution is simple. 
Now, for decades, Lansing and Washington have been in session, and for decades, we've honestly been at each other's throats over whether the public or the private sector holds the solution to all these problems. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been years, and our education system is still relatively the same. Sure, asset allocation sways from one side to the other and back again, but what Sarah and I are here today to propose is let's take a step back. Let's take a breather, and instead of reallocating this what to who that, let's, let's just embrace what we've already been given. See, Sarah and I believe that the solution to all these problems is as simple as a change in mindset and a reevaluation of what is currently in place. So we're sitting in the basement doing this puzzle, trying to figure out what in the world we're going to talk about today. And we asked ourselves, of our entire education, what moments have had the most impact on us? Of the thousands of hours in the classroom, which ones have actually stayed with us? And that's when we realized it's relatively simple. So all these problems, the, the AP test trend, the lack of passion, the disconnect in purpose, and the overall disenfranchisement with the traditional system as a whole, it could be solved by one simple course. And the kicker is, <laughs> it already exists. Enter the independent study. Now, if these two words on the screen are new to you guys, then we have a problem, because the independent study has been around for about as long as the education system has. But at this point, we either have uh, our students not knowing what it is, or they're just not taking advantage of it. So we figured that we'd like to really kind of go through the nitpicky, like the grittiness of what the independent study is. We actually uh, hired George Washington to help us out with this. So on the left, we have independent, showing a desire for freedom. And on the right, we have study, the activity or work of a student. This is literally all that the independent study course is. Students design a course for themselves, and it allows a student to pursue something that they're passionate about and create an experience that could be outside of a classroom. Now, independent studies that we've pursued in the past have ranged from dystopian literature to European philosophy of the 17th century. But today, we're going to talk about taking the independent study to the next level by leaving the classroom, actually leaving the school, and pursuing our passions in the community. But in order to explain that, we need a little bit of a background story. So Black River, our school, for the last month of the school year, offers a program called Project Term. Uh, it's four weeks. Students can choose four courses. And so what Sarah and I decided to do last year is we convinced our teacher to let us do a one month long independent study. We found ourselves in Atlanta and Seattle interning with local businesses. While I was in Atlanta, I was working with a company called Plywood People. What Plywood does is work with local businesses and communities that are trying to somehow benefit Atlanta in one way or another. While I was there, I basically got to work with the leadership team of a small business for three weeks, just like anyone working in that industry would get to do. Now that might not sound that exciting to someone who does this every day, but for a high school student, that was an incredible experience. To see that I could do something that had an impact not on a grade or on a test, on a project, but on something outside of myself. I got to see what it was like to plan a huge event or have a professional business meeting with someone. And those are skills that I never would have been able to learn if I was only in a classroom. Uh, my experience was a little bit different. Um, I was actually working on homework for, I promise, a diligent six minutes at LaMangelo's coffee shop before I ended up giving up on homework and venturing over to Facebook. Um, found this video that I really, really loved about a group of people who traveled to Iceland. Um, I sent the creators of the video an email thanking them. They ended up responding. Uh, we kind of emailed back and forth, and I jokingly asked if I could join them as an intern in May, and they said yes. So I found myself interning uh, with a company called Wonder Camp out in Seattle. Um, this is Davis and Tim. Um, but what this experience did for me was, so for a long time, I've really been interested in photography and videography, but whenever I've imagined a profession as a freelance videographer, or I've told other people about it, they're like, ah, oh, that's great, creative. Are you planning on living on your parents' you know, couch for the rest of your life? Um, and so this was really cool because I got to see through Davis what their business model looked like. Like, what was it like to charge REI for the, you know, the videos that they were making, and what was it like with your free time in the freelance videography industry to give back to the community? And so that's, I just loved the experience, and again, it was not something that I could have had inside a high school. So after we had these incredible opportunities, we did some research, and we were left with one question. Why do only 3.45% of local students participate in independent studies? Maybe you don't have four weeks where you can go do something crazy like we just talked about, but this is definitely something that's feasible for students here to do during the school year. So we started thinking, how can we make this something that's a viable course of study here locally right now? And we figured out that it's pretty straightforward. 
what we need to do is change the way that we're thinking about the independent study course itself. This isn't a course that you take senior year just to slack off and do nothing. It's a course that if you put the work into it, it sets you apart from other students and it allows you to demonstrate sustained interest in something other than just science or math. May you decide to focus on business, nonprofit work, municipal government, really anything you can imagine. And this isn't us just putting a graph on the screen and then throwing words at you. We really want you guys to understand not only how important this could be for our students, but how easily it could be implemented. Again, it already exists. Um, but uh, something else that kind of relates to this would be, again, going back to the college application process. So when you apply to a college, you have the option to do an interview. And I've done a few of these, and I think that the college interview really gives you insight into what colleges are looking for. It gives a face to the college, and they're asking you direct questions that they want to know about you. Um, so when I've sat down for these interviews, um, we've started, introduced ourselves, and they have not started out by asking um, about AP Calculus, about AP Physics Calculus based, about AP European History, because ladies and gentlemen, we already have 4.176 million students taking these exams. That was three years ago. Ten years ago, or ten years from now, we may have as many as 11 million exams being administered. They're no longer individual. What they were asking about was this independent study. They were asking about what was it like to take your education into your own hands? What better test of grit is there than taking your education into your own hands, designing a final product and seeing it through to its fruition? And that was just such a good experience and it was really good to see that kind of paying off there. Uh, but again, kind of relating to this is how much it, it just reignited the passion that I had within me that has kind of began to dwindle ever since freshman year. And even if someone isn't planning on attending college, this could be a great option because it could give them insight into the workplace that they're going to be working in before their food and rent depends on it. Now, there's another thing that we get to talk about, and it's kind of a buzzword in the business world, but social capital. Locally, we have mountains, worlds of social capital, but it's essentially inaccessible to our high school students. Now, with this proposition, we could make that accessible to high school students. In the workplace, students could bridge the gap between coworker and friend. But more importantly, they'd have a plan. Their dream to become an engineer, a software designer, a, a chef. It wouldn't die after they graduated because they would have met people who are in those industries. They would have talked to people who know what it's like to go through the ropes and they'd be able to give them some insight into how that would work out. But who are these people? Who are the individuals in business, municipal government, nonprofit work who would be willing to reach out a hand to students? Well, Many of you are community leaders or individuals who are committed to making a change locally. I think we can all agree that locking in the next generation of leaders is incredibly important. Now, Will and I believe that these individuals, these business workers, you name it, that are going to step along high school students, these people could be you. I know that sounds crazy. We're, we're challenging you to do this. Now, imagine that. High school students having the opportunity to work with people who are actually in a career that they're interested in. That is something that right now, we don't really have the opportunity to be doing. So going along with this is the idea that right now we have a brain drain. Uh, currently, we have around, I believe, 2013 and 2015, we had 135,000 individuals leave the state of Michigan with a bachelor's degree or higher. Crazy. This is something that's incredibly important to us. How is that possible that this many people are leaving? We haven't begun to engage them until after they've graduated college. We need to begin to integrate students while they're in high school before they have their eyes set on something outside of the state. By connecting our students to local businesses and organizations early on, you are directly affecting our ability to retain Michigan talent. Ladies and gentlemen, equipping the next generation, it starts with you. We're asking that if students come to you looking for a business opportunity during the school day, be willing to equip them. Or if you're a school administrator or you work at school, be open to the idea that students can leave campus and work in business. Now, we're not trying to reinvent the entire educational system here. We don't know if we're proposing would even work on a wide scale level, but what we do know is that there is a ton of opportunity in social capital in Holland and in this area that right now is nearly inaccessible to students. We don't know, as I said, if this is the solution to everything, if this would work anywhere else. But right here, right now, we believe that this is implementable. We believe that this is a next step, a small step in the right direction. Now for this to work, we need two changes in mindset. First, high schoolers' belief in themselves. And secondly, perhaps more importantly, 
your willingness to believe in our potential. Thank, Thank you. you.